woe is hell. I mean, the the I think the daily pictures out of uh, or, or the daily pictures out of Gaza I think illustrate that. Uh, we see Gaza basically, to a large extent, flattened. Uh, you're seeing thousands, thousands of people killed, uh, many of them uh, deservingly so, uh, as uh, as uh, supporters and members of Hamas. Uh, some not so, children, uh, many children uh, have been killed, which is always uh, sad to see, but of course, from the perspective of Israel necessary, there, there is no real alternative for Israel to defend itself without this kind of bombing. Uh, but on, on Friday, I think we got a, a, a sense of how hellish war can be and, um, and, and how just the uncertainties, the, the, the fog of war as it's described, in particular, uh, fighting a, a, an enemy like Hamas, which uh, whose fighters are in civilian clothes, who um, uh, who are uh, you know regularly uh, 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 set booby traps and uh, use Hebrew and and use the sounds of children and uh, uh, are regularly finding ways to lure Israeli soldiers into situations where they are killed. Well, on Friday, it turns out that three of the hostages, three male hostages, um, managed e either to escape or were abandoned or somehow freed themselves um, uh, from Hamas. They had been hiding in a particular home. They, they, they had been, you know, try to send SOS and help signals out. Uh, I guess nobody, nobody saw these signals. And then when they, when they thought uh, Israeli soldiers might be approaching, uh, they, they ventured out with a white flag uh, trying to basically uh, uh, get the attention of the Israeli soldiers. Israeli soldiers saw uh, people approaching unidentified um, and shot them. Uh, uh, they, the, the first round of uh, gunfire uh, killed uh, two of the hostages, a commanding officer then uh, required that the soldiers stop firing, but one of the soldiers continued and killed the third. In other words, Israeli troops on Friday killed three of the hostages they were there to save. I mean, uh, this is a, a, a massive tragedy on top of tragedy on top of tragedy that Israel has suffered uh, you know, really from, from October 7th. And uh, it's something that I think has resonated throughout Israeli society. It's, it's something everybody has been traumatized over the weekend uh, over. I think the soldiers who did the shooting will be traumatized really for life. I, I don't know. I, I, I think no matter how much they are told that, that this is what happens in war and this is... This is kind of the, the consequence of war. Um, y you know, they won't be able to forgive themselves or forget this completely. Uh, and um, it, it is going to hound them. I, I feel sorry for them um, in the future. Of course, the families of the three hostages that were killed. Um, and the... the, the uh, and, and, you know, this is a point worth emphasizing. You know, the, 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 the Israeli, uh, the Israeli uh, forces have now re-emphasized. So the, the three hostages were carrying a white flag. We emphasized don't shoot at a white flag, even if you, you're afraid of a booby trap. You know, they, they, they spoke Hebrew, but sort of many of the terrorists speak Hebrew. Uh, this is what happens when you deal with an with a enemy like this. Uh, and it, these things will happen. And it, it's, it's quite possible that some of the Israel's bombing has killed some hostages. This is why I said early on, Israel has to engage in this war under the assumption that the hostages are dead. Because you cannot fight a war against a group like Hamas 
on edge that anything you might do is going to cause damage to your, to, to, to your hostages. You have to defeat them. That has to be priority number one. You have to defeat them, and you have to defeat them thoroughly, and you have to defeat them quickly. And you, you know that, again, the more time Israel takes, the, the greater the international pressure on it. And, and, and you have to thoroughly defeat them. You have to destroy them completely, thoroughly. And you have to bring the Palestinian morale, the Palestinian view of the world to a low so that they reconsider, they reconsider their view of Israel, they reconsider their view of themselves. You know, sadly, uh, I don't know that this could have been avoided given the conditions of battle. Uh, I don't think it's worth speculating about whether this could be avoided given the conditions of battle. The Israeli army will now be more alert to the possibility that there are um, uh, hostages out there, whether that can actually be implemented under the conditions of intense fighting. This was all in, a re in an area, by the way, where there was intense fighting going on, the, the, it, you know, between Hamas and the Israeli soldiers. Um, whether, whether more lives of hostages can be saved, it is clear that the uh, 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 Hamas does not want to negotiate, is not interested in a ceasefire, does not want to release any more hostages. It's not clear how many they have. It's not clear how many are alive. It's not clear how many they have control over, right? I mean, hostages uh, are being held in all kinds of places, and it's not clear that the Hamas even knows who they have. Uh, it, it's also clear that they don't want to release some of them because of the horrors they've inflicted on them, and they don't want those horrors to get out. Another female hostage, you know, over the weekend was announced uh, that had been killed by Hamas. I think it was one of the women who were raped brutally before she was captured. Israel just has to get on, get on with the job of capturing and killing the entire Hamas leadership and killing and capturing as many of the Hamas fighters as possible and demoralizing the Palestinian people as much as they can. Um, one of the finds over the weekend was a, a large tunnel. I mean, this is quite a tunnel uh, under, uh, underneath Gaza, particularly in the north, reaching out all the way basically to the Israeli border. It is, uh, it is pretty obvious that this tunnel was, uh, was, was part of the uh, process of preparation and from which the October 7th assault uh, was made. Um, the, the entryway to the tunnel is just a few hundred yards from the actual uh, crossing into Israel and a nearby military base, a military base that, had in, uh, that was overrun on October 7th where a lot of soldiers died. Uh, it stretches over two and a half miles. It's linked with a sprawling tunnel network across Gaza. So it's linked to the other tunnels that are connected. But this one is wide enough for cars to pass through. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, vehicles uh, were brought to the mouth of this tunnel on October 7th to launch the attack um, that, they, uh, that they initiated. Um, it, it, is a, it is made of materials uh, that they haven't seen in other tunnels. It is more solid. Uh, and um, it, it is also um, seems to be another Israeli intelligence failure in not knowing that the tunnel existed so close to the Israeli border. And... Um, you know, not knowing of, of its size and capacity. Uh, it just shows the limitations, I guess, ultimately of intelligence. Uh, and uh, one of the elements of this is, I mean, this tunnel, you can extrapolate on the rest of the 500 kilometers of tunnels, this tunnel must have cost tens of millions of dollars to build uh, uh, and uh, tens of millions of dollars that could have gone to bettering the lives of Gazans. 
Uh, but uh, this is uh, this is the kind of um, you know uh, this is the, this is what Hamas did with the money that they got, including from the United States, but uh, from Qatar and Saudi Arabia and Iran and everybody else. Uh, the tunnel has ventilation, electricity, um, and is 55 yards underground in some in some points. Right? Millions and millions of dollars went into building this thing. All right. Um, uh, other than that, you know, battles continue. It, 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 it's it's very fierce. It's fierce both in the north and in the south. Uh, Israel, you know, it, it, they, I think in in some sense they keep thinking they've got control of the north, uh, but but Hamas still has men underground that keep popping up, and uh, and and reestablishing themselves in particular neighborhoods. Israel goes in, destroys them, destroys some of the tunnels. They pop up somewhere else. Others pop up somewhere else. This is just going to take a long time because you're not fighting a fun of war. You're fighting a war where the enemy is really unseen for most of the time and, uh, and can move from place to place without you noticing. So until Israel literally demolishes the entire tunnel system, which is going to take a long time, very, very difficult engineering task. Uh, it, it is going to still be dealing with these Hamas terrorists coming out of different holes in the ground and, uh, and, and attacking. This is the kind of urban warfare. This is worse than normal urban warfare because of, of the tunnel system. But this is the kind of urban warfare that is so difficult and is so deadly and is so hellish. And uh, think about a soldier who is in this for weeks upon weeks. It's not surprising the mistakes are made. I also told you, I think, the other day that over 20 percent of all Israel's casualties in Gaza have been a result of friendly fire. That, again, is, is tragic and horrific, but pretty standard, particularly in an in a urban warfare uh, like this. But even in, in Gulf War I, uh, well over 20% of the U.S.'s uh, casualties in that war were caused by friendly fire. So it's war is hell. It's just, it's a disaster. It should be avoided. And when you cannot avoid it, it needs to be done with massive force as quickly and as thoroughly as possible to get it over with quickly because of how hellish it ultimately is.